It seems like the majority of new woodworking based YouTube videos that are coming out these days are always focused on some high quality type of wood or a giant massive slab that costs several thousand dollars. I will admit that some of those videos are really cool. Before a DIY style woodworker, those big projects can quickly become unrelatable. Aside from that perspective, after you've acquired some woodworking skills, it can actually be really fun to go back and use basic construction lumber to do a project with. So in that previous shot, you may have noticed that a couple of these boards were cracked, several of them were warped, and despite the fact that these boards had the word premium stamped right on the side, they were anything but premium. Now ironically, the shape that these boards are in is actually the reason that I selected them. And what I mean by that is that for this project, each imperfection of the boards will become a feature and a highlight with the end result that'll give this piece some extra character. So what you've seen me do over the past minute or so is to cut each post to length and then run the surfaces through the planer in preparation of gluing up two giant slabs. Since I have a wider planer, I like to do my glue ups in steps so that I can surface each side before the final glue up. Now if you're wanting to repeat this project for yourself, I have good news and that's that the planer step is completely optional. You really don't need to surface these boards whatsoever and you'll understand why as we progress through the video. The other good news is that I actually have plans available for this project which we'll take a look at later on in the video. So the mystery of what the end result of this project will become will be revealed very shortly. But in the meantime, we first need to cut that smaller slab in half, and this can be done a number of different ways. The reason that I use the track saw is honestly just for dust collection, but you could do the same exact thing with a regular circular saw, or just cross cut all of the smaller posts to length before the original glue up. So if that last shot didn't make the result of this project obvious, this is gonna be a coffee table. But this coffee table has a long ways to go before we get to the final end result. So I wanna attach the leg bases to the upper frame of the coffee table using mortise and tenon joinery. While mortise and tenon joinery is often looked as superior to other types of joinery, the real reason I'm using mortise and tenon joinery on this project is simply just to practice my skills as a woodworker. Now that said, if mortise and tenon joints are out of your comfort level, this scenario for these bases would be perfectly acceptable for pocket holes, dowels, or even brackets up underneath the table. Anyway, since I am doing mortise and tenon joinery, I'll first cut the tenons out on the leg frames and then trace the outline of that tenon on the underside of the coffee table top, which will give me the location of where those mortises need to be. So we'll get started on those mortises using the plunge router and a spiral bit. And while I could have completed those mortises with the plunge router, I figured it'd be way more fun to use a chisel and pop those inner pieces out. And before I knew it, these pieces were flying all over my shop. And not surprisingly, I'm pretty sure there's still a couple of those pieces underneath my workbench or hidden in the depths of the corners of my shop to probably remain there for the next five years. Now I wouldn't say that the mortise and tenons were overly complicated, but one important thing is to make sure that each piece does fit in place, at least before you put the glue in anyways, because if you get halfway through the glue up and find that your tenon is too long or your mortise isn't deep enough, you've got a problem and it's gonna be a mess with the glue getting everywhere. So with our three main pieces mainly completed, 
Now we can get into the actual fun part of woodworking. The fun part of woodworking for this table will be a heavily distressed look. And by heavily distressed, I mean that we are going to absolutely distress the daylights out of this thing. Now earlier in the video I mentioned that it wasn't important to get the surfaces flat. And if you have an angle grinder with the sanding attachment, it's really not important to clean up any extra glue on the seams. If it wasn't obvious enough, the angle grinder will make extremely quick work out of any glue seams, stickers on the sides, or unlevel surfaces between the joints that you may have. And the fun part about this distress type finish is that there's no rules or blueprint. You can distress the surface literally using almost anything you have. You don't have power tools, you can use a hammer, or a chisel, a crowbar. If you're a fan of the Jason movies, grab your favorite machete. Or, if you're more of a gardener type, grab your favorite rake and go to town on the surface of that table. A heavy chain is also a great way to make some indentions on the top, but personally, my favorite tool that I used on this project was a chainsaw. Now it's pretty obvious from the video that the chainsaw was extremely effective on the surface of this, but it's probably worth mentioning that this is maybe a slightly underpowered chainsaw and the chain is really dull on it. So if you're using a chainsaw, maybe don't go too crazy on the surface. While this gave the tabletop an unbelievable amount of character, the problem was that there were a bunch of sharp and jagged pieces that would definitely leave some splinters in your fingers. So the solution was to grab my sander and go over the entire surface. I found that if you sand it down too much, you just grab the chainsaw again. And if you chainsaw it too much, you just grab the sander again. Once I finally found a happy medium, I was able to bring these pieces back inside, meaning that it was time to glue everything together. So honestly, I think that building this table would be pretty easy to follow along just from the video. But if you're interested in building this, Here's a preview of the plans that I have available for this coffee table. And this will give you all the dimensions and all the steps, taking all of the guesswork out of what dimensions and what size you should cut each of those pieces to. Also because this is a brand new video and a brand new set of plans, and I'm also still kind of new on Etsy trying to get some reviews, I'll be posting the plans available for 50% off, at least for the first week or so after this video was uploaded. So it really depends on how you look at things, but at this point in the build, you could say that either the hard part or the fun part is finished. All we needed to do now was glue those leg bases in place, and in no time, we actually have a functional coffee table. So while that surface looks great, anytime that you go too fast and get sloppy in woodworking, it definitely shows. And because I used so much glue in the tenons and didn't wipe anything up, some of that glue came through through the surface. In an attempt to be extra gentle to the surface, I just sanded everything out by hand. And by sanding out by hand, what I actually meant to say was that I grabbed the chainsaw and just cut all that excess glue out again. So at this point, I was pretty happy with how the surface looked. But out of curiosity more than anything, I wanted to see if this wire brush attachment would do anything. To my surprise, this was really effective, and this would work great maybe if you didn't have a chainsaw or you weren't comfortable using a chainsaw on the surface. So while that wire brush technically finishes the table up, we still needed to add some color and stain to it. On a really positive note, with the rough surface, it's pretty well impossible to mess the staining up. But on a negative note, because of those rough surfaces, you'll end up using quite a bit more stain than you would if this was sanded completely smooth. A really important step that a lot of people get wrong whenever finishing a table or some type of project is to let the stain dry. I think the can says something along the lines of waiting at least four hours before applying a clear coat but I've found that that's just completely untrue. 
It's obviously best to wait as long as possible, but I've found that three or four days is usually a good amount of time. The final addition to this coffee table was these corner brackets that I added. Now these brackets technically serve no purpose whatsoever other than decoration, but if anyone asks, I'll definitely tell them that it holds the entire table together. So does this project qualify as a trendy video featuring some monumental woodworking projects with extremely expensive materials? Considering I spent about $150 on everything altogether for this, I would have to say no. And while I definitely can't deny that I've taken part in some of those expensive pieces with complex joinery, I think going back to basics occasionally and switching it up a little bit is a great way to keep things fun. Thanks for watching.